is the first full day of official spring as spring equinox has sprung happy march 20th everyone in today's video a winter pattern continues with winter like temperatures and snowfall especially across the north and we also are looking at a storm system as we go into this weekend and early next week we'll update you on that and also a warming trend perhaps into early april we'll have all the details for that later on in today's video but if you are here to the channel you might as well subscribe to the channel down below here with the accurate weather forecast throughout this year. We'll keep you covered right here on this channel. Also, be sure to press the like button down below, the thumbs up button. It helps out more than you know. So let's look at our low temperatures as you head out the door this Wednesday morning. You can see to the north across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes and interior New England. That's where our coldest temperatures are in the United States with temperatures in the teens and 20s this morning and adding in in salt to injury those wind gusts out there over 10 20 miles per hour knocking down those wind chill values into the single digits above or even slightly below zero especially up here into northern minnesota northeastern north dakota and the up of michigan seeing near zero degree wind chill values this morning looking through today there's the cold air it's up to the north across the upper midwest the great lakes in interior new england otherwise it's into southern canada Canada. We are starting to warm up though across the west, so above normal temperatures expected there today. As we go into Thursday, much of the same. Colder air bottled up to the north and across the eastern U.S. on Thursday, and that really continues as we go to end the work week on Friday, March 22nd. What does this mean from a precipitation standpoint? So going through today, we have a little system here in the southeastern portions of Canada that could be bringing some snow showers, some snow flurries here to the Great Lakes, especially the eastern Great Lakes and interior New England, really not that big of a deal middle of the country pretty dry and a new storm system a clipper system this is what we call an alberta clipper moving out of southern alberta canada and into eastern portions of montana and the western dakotas today that will move more into montana and the western dakotas tomorrow on thursday meanwhile the gulf of mexico is open for moisture so we have some rain showers down here from kansas especially there into oklahoma crossing over the red river there into the eastern side of texas Texas along and east of the I-35 corridor on Thursday. Then that clipper system that is up into Montana and the western Dakotas on Thursday, that will make its way eastward into the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest on Friday. Snow showers for places like Chicago, especially the northern suburbs, Milwaukee up to Green Bay, and even perhaps over there toward Detroit as we go into Friday. Rain showers here and there across the southeast, the Gulf Coast pretty wet there from Louisiana to Mississippi. Mississippi and Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina getting hit by some rainfall as we go into Friday. Here's the snowfall map. So going through Saturday, March 23rd, notice the Alberta Clipper that originates up here in Alberta, Canada, could drop a few inches of snow for those folks, two to four inches. And then as we go into the northern states here, not really a lot of moisture. This system's moving in from the north and west, so not a big moisture source. So only seeing around one to as much as three inches of snowfall. And most of this it will be accumulating on only grassy surfaces. Then looking at our rainfall prospects as well, further to the south here, East Texas, along and east of the I-35 corridor, seeing some pretty heavy rain along the Gulf Coast and into the southeast. And here's the areas here, Dallas, Fort Worth, around an inch of rain, perhaps three inches of rain going through Saturday there in the Houston region, an inch of rain there in Lake Charles and Shreveport. And then moving east from there in here toward the Montgomery region, uh, the Atlanta region, getting over here in towards Columbia, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Raleigh, all these areas, widespread amounts, one to three inches worth of rain through this weekend. And especially this corridor here from Virginia down through portions there, the Carolinas and Georgia, that's where we start to see more of that marginal risk for flash flooding Friday the 22nd into Saturday the 23rd here. Just keeping an eye on flooding, not a big deal, but if you come across a flooded roadway, turn around don't drown. That is definitely a safe way to approach things. Now, as we go into the weekend, 
a big monster trough starts to develop out here and this really dives to the south folks this moves all the way into the Baja of California and northwest Mexico with the base of this trough and then as it goes to the east it starts to weaken a bit but really elongate a big long wave trough across the south central US early next week and this does signal at least a stronger storm system in the lower 48 this weekend especially late weekend and into next week so here we go on Saturday we got some moisture here out to the west snowfall in the higher elevations rainfall in the lower elevations there on Saturday pretty decent rain system across the east as we go into Saturday there as well could provide us with some snow from Maine Vermont New Hampshire into upstate New York something to keep an eye on there for Saturday as well then as we go into Sunday here's our main kicker system we're going to start to see more snow with the cold air to the north across Montana the Dakotas into Minnesota there northern Iowa perhaps here on the southern flank of the snow band moving over into the Badger state of Wisconsin further south keeping an eye on Sunday for severe weather potential or just some thunderstorms in general from Kansas southward there toward the Red River. And then as we go into Monday, a deepening system, 990 millibar low, tightening up those isobars on the backside. Could be seeing a wind-driven snow event across portions there of the Dakotas, down into central and western Nebraska, perhaps western Kansas. And then the cold front producing some thunderstorms, possible severe weather near the mid-Missouri Valley southward to the lower Mississippi Valley on Monday. That should shifts to the east, the low pressure up here toward Minneapolis-St. Paul on Tuesday, colder air being wrapped in on the, on the backside, more of a snowmaker this go around on Tuesday across Manitoba and Ontario, Canada with the colder air up there, but the cold front still providing the threat for thunderstorms and potential severe weather as we go into that Tuesday, March 26 time frame. Here are a couple weather models showing you the potential for snow. We're not going to look at any amounts or anything like that. Just the placement of the snow for right now until we get closer. Here's the ECMWF model, the European model here from Saturday the 23rd of March through Tuesday the 26th of March. The heaviest snows are from Minnesota into the Dakotas here in perhaps northern Nebraska on this model compare that to the GFS, it's pretty much in the same ballpark here, except maybe just a little bit further to the north. But given this very far out still, a few days, this is pretty good agreement. So it looks like the upper Midwest and the northern high plains are in line for a decent snowstorm this weekend and into early next week between Saturday, March 23rd and Tuesday, March 26th. Now we have to watch the warm side of the storm. As we go into Sunday, typically what you need for severe weather this time of year is dew points of 55 degrees Fahrenheit or higher and you see that up into portions there of the central and southern plains on Sunday the highest dew points down into southern Oklahoma and into portions of Texas while not overly moist and unstable there could be enough on Sunday for some isolated widely scattered severe storms from southern Nebraska all the way down through Kansas Oklahoma and into north Texas as we go into Monday there's the warm sector all the way up into the Hawkeye state of Iowa 51 degree dew point there maybe just enough in Des Moines for a severe storm as we go into Monday. Higher dew points to the south into the 60s there and toward Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and East Texas. And then the warm sector starts to get pinched off as the system becomes a little bit more disorganized on Tuesday, but still watching severe weather from the lower Ohio River Valley into the Tennessee Valley and the southeast as we go into Tuesday. Here's the Colorado State machine learning probabilities for severe weather. Does pretty well, and you can see on Sunday, maybe a marginal risk day or so across the central southern plains, level one out of five perhaps. Then as we go into Monday, maybe a more significant day for severe weather, relatively speaking. I could see a marginal or even a slight risk of severe weather issued there as we get closer to Monday the 25th. And then again, more of a marginal, maybe borderline slight risk day there across the southeast and the Dixie Alley region as we go into Tuesday on the 26th early next week. We'll keep an eye on that. Behind this storm system, another punch of cold air. I know we, we had a lot of warm weather this winter. Winter's coming back with a vengeance here to end the month of March, and we're going to have more below normal temperatures across the central and western two-thirds of the country in the wake of that cold front with that system. But ahead of the cold front, the eastern seaboard, in particular the northeast, will still see above normal temperatures at least through a 
April 2nd on that Tuesday time frame. And here's those hazardous temperatures. So if you do live in this region here in the south central U.S., make sure between the 27th and the 29th of March that you cover your plants because there could be some frost and some hard freezes across this region. And I know there's some sensitive vegetation, especially the further south you go towards the Gulf Coast. So make sure again to cover up those plants. Looking at the precipitation outlook between Wednesday the 27th of March and Tuesday April 2nd, still a very active pattern. So yes, the cold air comes in, but we're also going to remain active. Some more snow opportunities, yes, even to end the month of March, but a little bit drier down here toward the Rio Grande Valley. And you can see the heaviest precipitation with the form of rainfall will likely be out here to the west across portions of southwestern Oregon into the Sacramento Valley, central and northern California. California, and then across the eastern United States as well between the uh, 27th of March and the 31st, the eastern seaboard and the southeast getting inundated with some heavier rainfall during that time frame. Looking at that, you can see that here. So from the 27th of March through the 2nd of April here, the heaviest corridor of rain across the east from Maine all the way down there toward the Alabama and Georgia region, pretty heavy rain there, there through the Appalachians, maybe some snowfall mixing in there in the highest of elevations of the Appalachians as possible. And then across the west, there we go, Sacramento Valley, central northern California, southwestern Oregon getting some decent rains even up into western Washington state, places like like Seattle seeing some decent rain as we end the month as well. Looking at a couple ensembles, here's the European Ensemble guidance, and you can see heavier snows out west, Cascades, Sierras, the Rockies, and even maybe the northern high plains, upper Midwest vicinity as that cold air sticks around. You can see very much an agreement there in the GFS Ensemble guidance, maybe just a little further south, and even the Canadian Ensemble guidance, the CMC showing that basically the same picture as well. So the snow potential will remain to the north, but we're still having it as we end the month of March. Looking beyond here, so as we go towards that first full week, entering into the second week perhaps there of April, here's a couple ensembles and the kind of mixed signals here as well. The Euro European ensemble guidance for your temperature anomalies, hang on to those below normal temperatures out west and really across the lower 48 in general, but there's a mixed signal here. The GFS ensemble says no, the colder air was gonna be more progressive, it's gonna move further to the east and we're gonna start to warm up in the middle of the country. So kind of a mixed signal here right now. It is long range. This is April 2nd through April 9th time frame. So We'll have to keep an eye on this as we do get closer, but right now anything is on the table from a cool down again to maybe a warming trend as we go into early April. Right now it is 50-50. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you like these detailed, accurate weather forecasts. We'll keep them coming throughout this year. Make sure to press the like button down below. It's the thumbs up button. It helps out more than you know, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Wednesday out there.